Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is David Key and I'm with ESP Associates and I'm also joined here with Matt Lawfer with NCDOT Hydraulics. This morning, we're gonna to talk to you about a very exciting project we've been working on for the past few years called Feynman T. It's NCDOT's response tool for managing flood impacts to transportation assets. I've got a lot to dive into here, so I'm just gonna get going. Uh, a quick roadmap of our presentation for you. I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction, uh, a little bit of history of Feynman and, and how it born Feynman T. Then I'm going to talk about and do live demos. So please bear with me and say a little prayer for Feynman T. One's based on gauges or real time readings, and another one's based on the predictive hurricane storm surge information. I'm going to talk a little bit about ground truth and how we've been able to validate this data, and then some steps. Uh, next steps for the future as, as we conclude. So very exciting, and I hope you get a lot out of this. Number one, some introduction. For those of you familiar with Feynman, this may be um, no news to you, but North Carolina's Feynman system stands for Flood Inundation Mapping and Alert Network. That's F-I-M-A-N. This system's actually been around since 2013, but really it was, over, it, it was rewritten in 2015 and 2016, and it's been a public site since then. Very instrumental in the last four to five, six hurricanes that have hit us since 2016. Sites made up about 450 to 500 um, uh, sensors across the state that are measuring rain gauge, rain, rainfall, mostly stream stage and coastal surge modeling. The site provides real time and forecasted flood inundation and building impacts and summary reports, as well as text and email alerts for um, users. A big thing happened in 2018 that 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 gave the the the, the thought behind Feynman T. Uh, we had two of our major highway corridors in our state go underwater. On the left side of my screen, you see Interstate 95 um, on the southern end of our state in the city of in the city of Lumberton, North Carolina. Interstate 95 went underwater and was basically closed for about a week. Uh, it topped over the the bridge there on the Lumber River and uh, really shut down tra transportation in our state on this very important north-south corridor along the eastern seaboard for about a week. At the same time in the eastern part of our state, Interstate 40, which crisscrosses our state from east to west, but most importantly connects our state's capital with the, um, with the, with the coast and is an important evacuation corridor it was also underwater in the town of Wallace. Um, Interstate 40 went underwater by about four feet of water uh, uh, and uh, was, was basically shut down for a week. The graphic you see at the bottom or the movie you see at the bottom is really compelling imagery from the event that sticks with, sticks with me. This is a cleanup crew following where they're washing off dead fish after the water was seeded off of, off of our, our most important interstate in the state. So obviously NCDOT was put in a position where they really wanted to use some of the data to never let this happen again, or at least know about it when it was going to happen. So some of the things that uh, was the objectives of Feynman T was a, a collaboration of work between NCDOT and North Carolina Emergency Management. And the main objectives was to leverage, leverage the existing in, in investment in data, the LIDAR data, the roadway data, the Feynman infrastructure and the database and all the lessons learned from developing the inundation mapping tool for the past two decades, put that together to give DOT actionable information on when roads were gonna flood, when they're gonna be clear again, and how the bridges are performing hydraulically. Software was gonna be built on the Feynman network. So it's a proven platform. We were just gonna stand up a database alongside of Feynman, but not be in the way of Feynman for emergency response. In 2019, we did a pilot on Feynman along the Neuse River where we tested and developed the Feynman functionality and the database and rolled that out on a non-public development server. The next year, 2020, we rolled out expansion. We developed uh, new data for 35 plus odd sites, developed the coastal tools for the surge, which I'll show you later on this morning, and lots of other functionality, including exports and other reporting tools. The backbone of Feynman T is data. As part of Hurricane Florence, we developed, a, as part of the response to Hurricane Florence, 
we developed the statewide LIDAR 3D road elevation. What you see on your screen now is not a digital elevation model for North Carolina. It is the three-dimensional rendering of our road network, some 80,000 miles down to the pixel level with uh, LIDAR derived elevation data. I'm going to zoom in a couple times and show you some pilot data. What you see there in color coded is just a slice of our road network, a 3D road network. I'm going to zoom in just to show you the level of detail that we have down to the state, down to the street level. This is the backbone that drives Fine T. So now I'm going to dive right into the application and, 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 and give you a little demonstration of how it's used and some of the functionality. So this is Fine T. It is a password protected non-public site. So the authentic, we authenticate using a system called NCID, uh, where users are, are given authentication via that secure login with user ID and password. Once they're in, they get to a home screen that looks just like this. Um, you, you've got your basic map functionalities, your Zoom, your Home, your Find Me, your base map picker. Um, you've got some controls to show things like weather radar. Um, you can show, you can filter data by NCDOT divisions or river basins. You can search. Um, it's got a legend. All of the active sites are color coded by the, the current condition. So on a day like today, it's sunny, it's beautiful. It's pretty, pretty boring day to demo Feynman, but I can, I can change that. Uh, we've got a test site uh, set up for an exercise that EM and the NCDOT recently completed. And this site is emulating what Feynman T will look like during a flood event in the east. So we've got uh, six sites in here along the Neuse River, and I'm going to demo some functionality of Feynman T using this site. So you can see this is simulating Hurricane Fran back in 1996. And this simulation was set up for the exercise, assuming it's September the 12th, 1996. At that day, the, 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 the river was cresting in Goldsboro and still rising downstream of there. So I'm going to use this test case scenario to just to show you the power and how Feynman T is used in the, by emergency responders during an event. So in order to interact with these sites, you simply click on them. You click right here and you're going to go into a dashboard for this site. So I'm at Noose River at Kinston, pretty big river down here and a very flood prone community. I'm going to turn a few things off now to make it a little bit cleaner. So what you're going to see is a dashboard. This floating dashboard has four tabs. I'm going to walk you through each one of these tabs. The current tab is pretty self-explanatory. This is going to show you current conditions on the map, and it's going to show you current conditions in these information widgets down here. So right now, in this scenario, it's September the 12th. It's noon. We're peaking upstream, and we're still rising down here in Kinston. It shows you the, the blue area is the inundation uh, under current conditions, and these color-coded roads are much like the color-coded buildings in Feynman, except it deals with flooding over roads. We've got a legend on here, and the roads are color-coded by depth of water over them, anywhere from zero to five feet, which is a yellowish road, all the way up to five feet inundated, which is a purple road. Our bridges show up with color codes as well, showing their condition. Right now, all you see is green, so that means that the water is not within uh, one foot of the low cord or low steel of the bridge. Assets show up as a, as a NCDOC asset, show up as a red triangle. This next uh, widget working from left to right is the hydrograph. This shows you everything to the left of this line is uh, past events and past stage. This is color coded by severity and everything to the right of this line is the forecasted, um, the forecasted information. And I'll come back to that. This tab in the middle shows you the historic peak at, at this gauge. We're at 19.1 here but the historic peak on this was Hurricane Matthew of 28.3. These next two widgets over here on the right side deal with NCDOT assets. The first one is showing the summary of impacted roads. Um, right now, this shows that we've got about a mile of roads impacted, but all of those are local. This, this widget can be interacted with by clicking on it, which will pull up a table that shows the overall summary uh, itemized by road type and depth of flooding. 
Also, it has another tab in here that shows every segment. This shows every segment. So there's 61 segments of road impacted right now. These can be sorted, they can be filtered, they can be queried. And each one of these, if you click on it, it'll zoom you to that road segment and show you the show you the impacted roads. Um, the next tab is the bridges. This will pull up a table of all of the bridges and it will show the road name, the road elevation, the low chord elevation, the current flood elevation based on our modeling and sensors, and then the freeboard. These are sortable tables. Um, the next tab I wanted to show you is really how this is used. It's a forecast tab. When you click on the forecast tab, we know we're still rising here. So we want to see how bad is it going to get in Kinsley. We click on forecast. The map really doesn't change, but the, the, the dashboard changes. So now we're presented with a time bar slider or a forecast slider that has two axes. The lower axis is time from now, and the upper axis is uh, the river stage based on the forecast. So really what you're looking at here is a, is a visualization of this side of the chart. So we start out red, and we go up into purple and we end with a peak of 23.3 five days from now. Now, how do you use this slider? You can either, you could use this slider by either picking a time, say you want to see what it's going to be in 48 hours. So you can just come right here and click and the map will show you within 48 hours, your inundation is going to look like this. And these are the roads that are going to be impacted and these tables update. So in 48 hours, you're going to move to 1.5 miles, not a big difference. But so you say, what's it gonna look like at the peak? Well, you're gonna come in here and slide it all the way over and you're gonna see the inundation and the road impacts at the peak. From here, you would go in and see that we've got one state highway that is going to be impacted. So I'm gonna use this tool to figure out where it is. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna click on my road segments and I'm gonna use this filter here to filter by state highway. That's going to show me that, that I've got segments of highway uh, 11 in here that are going to be flooded. I'm going to click on this. It's going to take me in. And this section of highway 11 is going to have about four feet of water on it in five days. So a very, very powerful planning tool. Another tab is the scenario tab, which this is pretty self-explanatory. The scenario tab walks the allows the user to play um, to to do what if scenarios based on a variety of flood stages and river heights on at a at a given flood stage what roads are impacted and what bridges are going to what are the states of the bridges are going to be so it's a, a very good tool. My last my last tab is the store tab. This is a brand new feature that we added to Common T this past month, and it's probably one of my favorites. If I click on historic, oh, well, let me preface that, that when we're, you know, during a flood event, uh, a lot of times you get a lot of questions on how bad does this, how does this event compare to past events? A lot of folks in the eastern part of our state want to compare to either Matthew or, or Hurricane Floyd or Hurricane Fran. So when you click on this historic tab, it's going to query a database that will pull up the maximum flood of record for this particular site. Um, which was Hurricane Matthew in 2016. And so the table is going to show the stage from that event. The inundation is going to be the inundation from that event. And the color-coded roads are going to be the, the actual DOT asset impacts from that event. So if you want to see how this compares to how Hurricane Matthew compares to, say, Hurricane Florence, you just select it in this table, and the map will automatically change to the, the maximum extent from Hurricane Florence and the impacted roadway from Hurricane Florence. And the last thing I wanted to show you is an export, is an export tools. In the upper right corner of the dashboard, there's a download KMZ button. From this tool, you can click on that. It's going to give you a little bit of instructions on what to do when you download it. And then it's going to download a KMZ which is a grouping of the inundation layer that you have on your screen now. It could be the forecast, it could be the current, it could be an historical event. And it's going to group those together and create a Google Earth KMZ that you could either download, email, 
or pull up a pull up on the screen and not have to be inside Fama T. So there's the inundation extent from Hurricane uh, Matthew. And this data comes across SMART where it pulls the attributes of the road, like the maximum depth in the road name. So really, really cool way to export, export data. So that's pretty much it for the um, gauge site. Now I want to talk about the surge, storm surge site. Um, this begins with a system called CERA or the Coastal Emergency Risk Assessment. This tool uh, during, uh, with an approaching hurricane in the, uh, in the east, on the, in the Atlantic, um, we're able to download the results of uh, ADSERC modeling for that event uh, that contains GIS layers of the forecasted peak inundation. We've developed some tools to extract that data with uh, every time an advisory is updated and that data is downloaded and processed. We process that data with the LIDAR data to develop a 3D inundation map. We also process that data with the statewide 3D road rasters that I showed you in the other slide to develop 5 t data to support response to storm surge. So what happens is during an event, the site updates every six hours with a new inundation map based on that uh, hurricane center track and the uh, estimated impacts to the road network uh, from that inundation mapping. So it's a, uh, so every six hours, the map service updates inside the SARA module of Finding T. So I'll switch over to that now and just show you a demo of that. So at the upper left-hand corner of this, you've got two modes. You've got gauge-based and SARA surge. Uh, right now we're in gauge-based, so, gauge so you see all these gauges. If I click over to SARA surge, I'll get a disclaimer and I can hit accept. Well, today's a sunny day. We don't have an approaching hurricane, so nothing's going on. But if there were a hurricane out there, you would see the track, you'd see the last advisory track, you'd see the inundation mapping and the roadway impacts from that one. But what I can show you now is something really cool that we added. We added these past storms. And you go in here, you can choose an, a year event and uh, we've loaded five different uh, past hurricanes in here. Hurricane Fran from 96, Matthew from 2016, Florence from 18, Dorian from 19, and Isaias from 2020. So say I wanna see what the storm search looked like from Hurricane Florence in 2018. I'll click the year 18, and I've only got one in there for 18. The map will change and it'll load the inundation polygon for Hurricane Florence. You'll load the track for Hurricane Florence. Down here will be a summary table showing how many miles of roadway were impacted by that storm surge. So it's a lot, it's 1,670. And then the, the tool is set up to allow visualization of not only that storm surge from Hurricane Florence, but the impacted roadways. This is what it would look like also with an approaching event. So you see down here in Carolina Beach, the uh, inundation mapping uh, from that hindcasted data. And you can also see the uh, impacted roads. A really cool use of this tool is a what if scenario. So if, say I wanna compare the inundation mapping from Florence in 2018 to what happened in 2000, uh, 1996 from Hurricane Fran, I would just stay in this view, change it over to another event and pick Hurricane Fran and you start to see the differences in impacts. So this is the Hurricane Fran inundation mapping, and I can change that back to Hurricane Florence. So it's a really, really good tool as a storm is approaching. A lot of times you get the question, well, how's this gonna to compare to Fran? Or how's this gonna to compare to Floyd or Matthew or Isaias? It's a really, really powerful tool that we're really proud of. And lastly, I'll talk a little bit about validation. We've had the chance to test some of this tool with recent flooding events. And this is just some examples of some ground truthing, we call it. This is out in the Neuse River back in, uh, back in February of last year. Uh, the tool was reporting freeboard of about a tenth of a foot. This was taken about the same time that was taken, and we measured about six inches. So that's not bad four miles from the gauge to know that you're that close. So we were really pleased with this validation. Here's another one that I'm really proud of. This is also uh, in along the Noose River. This is the inundation um, on February 12th at 9.15. 
these color coded roads were were supposed to be underwater. We we sent crews out in the field, and I was standing right here looking this way along Slick Rock Road, and this is what I saw. Um, the system was showing about 1.5 feet of water over the road, and just so happens this, this truck drove by and gave me a really good validation point for, for, that, for that road in addition there. So we're really pleased with how this data came by. This was about six or seven miles from the gauge, which showed very, very accurate data. And lastly, some of our historic data we, we compared um, some of our historic, this is the high water mark or the historic flood inundation from Hurricane Floyd way back in 1999. So you see the blue area is the inundation extents of the, of the 99 event. And this, I found this old picture. This was the intersection of Candlewood Road and Steeplechase Road on September 16th of, 90, of 1999. The Feynman T data said that Candlewood Road had 7.1 feet of water on it um, during the peak of the event. And this validates really well with about halfway up that stop sign. So we're really pleased with that validation as well. Lastly, I'll talk about our next steps and, and where NCDOT is going in the future with this. Um, NCDOT completed a build out plan for Feynman T prioritizing hundreds of sites uh, for new, new gauges to be installed and also Feynman T products to be developed. Uh, we're developing lots of new functionality to Feynman T, including some, some reports to help with the battle rhythm during, during disaster events and hurricane flooding and other types of flooding. We also um, have this stood up on emergency management uh, staging server for hurricane season 2021, as well as a redundant instance at ESP server over here where the storm search module will run. We have some pilots planned. We have a pilot plan for integrating the national water model into Feynman T to supplement the sites that do not have a forecast. We've been developing some logic to pull the national water water forecast and do the inundation mapping on that, as well as a cost and impact analysis pilot study where we're going to look at inundated roads and the temporal aspects of how long those are inundated and what those costs are to, to transportation and also maintenance of the roads. Speaking of maintenance, there's a lot of maintenance to be done with the, the LRS network of the roadways, the DEM maintenance to be done, the model maintenance to be done, and lots of other software and database updates. So in conclusion, um, 2018 proved that you know, even, even our most resilient highways like Interstate 95 and Interstate 40 are, are prone to flooding, prone to closure. And um, information is going to be powerful. And knowing how to answer questions is, is the, the, the name of the game during one of these events. Knowing, to, knowing how to answer the question, what roads are going to be underwater? Knowing how to answer the question, when is those roads going to be clear? Knowing how to answer questions, do we need to inspect those bridges? Do we need to close those roads? This is all powerful information and really, really, really proud to be a part of it. And um, I can't wait to see where we go for the next next few years in the state. I want to thank you for your time and we're here standing by with any questions.